Well, welcome everybody to our Real Bird Hands On Workshop. We're glad to have you here this morning. Thanks for joining us. Um, we're, we're glad to have you. We, have, we get together a couple times a month to share with you how to use the most cutting edge tools to help you market your listings, to market yourself, and to attract, uh, attract buyers to your listings and your services. I'm glad to be here today. My name is Eric from Agent Web Coach. I'm a guest host on this training session here this morning. And I'm not alone. I'm joined by one of the owners and developers of Real Bird, Gabe Gross. He's with us this morning. Good morning. Hi, Gabe. everybody from Redwood City. And uh, it's uh, perennial spring here. We're waiting for rain again. Replay of two years ago. We haven't wow. had any rain at all. Oh, my gosh. We've, we've seen California burn, hoping, waiting for the temperatures to die down and get some rain. So uh, glad to have you here. Um, I'm broadcasting from northern Utah where we got about five inches of snow outside. And uh, maybe some of you are listening in from uh, warm places like lovely Sarasota Beach, Florida. Uh, we have Ann and Larry Brostek that are with the first guests on the webinar here to, to this morning. Hopefully it's uh, we can all dream of um, a white sandy, uh, you know, Christmas and holidays if you're in Sarasota anyway. If, so we're glad to have you here to guys today. What we want to talk about, we're going to be talking about landing pages today why landing pages work, how to use them. Um, Real Bird, of course, tries, uh, works hard to be on the cutting edge of marketing and uh, Real Bird's supplied you. If you're a member of Real Bird, it's supplied you with some great tools to help you market those listings and those landing pages to attract people, uh, to attract uh, whatever you're looking for, sellers or buyers, whatever your services are, however you're using the Real Bird tools. Um, you know, you think about what is a landing page? Well, landing page is basically um, content you're putting in front of people in a very narrow fashion. Think of like uh, the horse. Why do they put blinders on the horse? We don't want to think about our potential clients as, as, as horses. But basically, uh, it, everything. look at this. I've Just in this preparation for today, I think I've got 10 tabs open. This is how um, most people, when they're consuming content and they're searching the, the web, that um, – this is how they usually do it. There's lots of tabs open. Uh, you got a lot of things to distract you. Um, you pick up any um, any uh, you know website. I don't know. Let's go. I'll just pick up uh, MSNBC or whatever uh, or MSN, and you can see that it's real easy to be distracted in any way. Um, on this page, I'm going to have all kinds of things. I can click on the headlines. I can click on the the sidebar, I click on the featured event, I click on what's interesting. Oh, what happened here? Oh, there's a video to press. You could see that, that the web is kind of uh, wanting to attract you in different areas to kind of like what, what, what moves you. You know, hopefully you're going to click, uh, click on something. Look, even here we have a, um, an ad here that I can tap to calculate my, my new house payment. Now, who is that? Someone's paying to have that um, ad put there in that spot. Uh, to attract me because um, it looks like they, I don't know, what are they trying to sell me? Um, a mortgage loan? Okay. So the idea is everything seems to be distracting online. Um, uh, there's a lot of things for me to click. There's videos for me to click. There's links for me to click. Pop-ups for me to click. I can, you know, go right to my social media. And, and the idea of landing pages are they kind of cut that all out. They kind of say, okay, let's reduce it down. To let's and let's feed people to just what we want them to look at. So we don't want to treat them like a horse, but basically we're putting blinders on the horse and say, just look at this. So I'm gonna give the example. Um, uh, these are examples of some uh, landing pages, and here's some of the landing pages that we've uh, had created inside Real Bird. And this is basically focused. Not a lot of things to click on. Obviously, this. Um, uh, landing page can be shared in these different spots, but it's basically, hey, you want to find out more information about this home that was just listed in Sacramento? Put your name, put your email, phone, click green button. Boom, done. Okay? That's it. It's it's a focused uh, presentation to get people to put their name, put their email, enter their phone number in there so that you can get them as a lead, because this is what this is, one of the real bird landing pages. Um and for them to get the information they want about this home that was just listed in Sacramento. So uh, now you can create your own landing pages for whatever reason you want to do. Maybe you want to focus on, um, I don't know, focus on um, uh, a, 
a, a specific community that people might be interested in. Uh, and then we're going to show you how to do that today. Um, or in more specifically, how to get them focused on, on sharing a landing page and getting their information so they become a lead for you. That's kind of what it comes down to. Now, uh, so landing pages can be used for different things. I'm, I'm, I do build websites for real estate agents. And I'm, I'm more and more of, of my uh, web pages I'm uh, creating that look more like this, kind of simple information, bigger pictures, bigger font, you know, explore. Here's who we are. Here's what we do. And here's from our blog. So more and more, uh, the design that, that I that I that I do for web pages to be with for optimal engagement are simpler with like I say bigger font, bigger pictures, bigger buttons, and that's because uh, more and more people um, uh, are using the real estate tools in a way. Uh, well, think of it this way: this this is a, a, a one of the top agents in the East Bay area. His name's Doug Buens of the Six Eighty Group, and I looked in his analytics and. Uh, I found out that more than 50% of the people that view his website are on a mobile device. Most of them, and most of them being iPhone and tablet and iPad because he's in Apple country, right? Not too far from, from Mountain View, California, but uh, sidebars don't really work much anymore. Um, because if you have a, a if there, someone's viewing your website um, on a mobile phone or tablet, which is probably more than a, a, about half or a little more than half, of people, um, the, the sidebar usually ends up, if you have a, a website where you have your content here and you have a sidebar here distracting people, that's going to end up at the bottom of this column anyway. Okay, so sidebars don't quite work like they used to. Now, I'm sharing this with you today on a 32-inch screen. If I push push the screen down, you'll see this is probably closer to what they're going to see on a tablet. Okay, and even further, this is probably what they're going to see on an iPhone. Okay, see the menu went to what they call a hamburger or, you know, met menu icon with just a, a bunch of labels and everything gets in a nice neat column. So if you have sidebars, they're sitting at the bottom of this long scroll of information. So that's just, that's just how things are. That's, that's where, that's where, that's where things are nowadays. So, so by the way, if you're working on your website, you need to think about that. And, you know, when you build your website and um, you need to make, you know, check out your device on a mobile phone, on a tablet, not just an iPhone, you know, like a, like an Apple phone, but, Try it on an Android. It's good to see. It's good to know because you need to know what type of experience uh, the people that you want to attract to your services, you want to know what experience they're going to have and it want it always be a good experience, okay? So that's just a little bit about distraction and landing pages and how the landing pages tend to focus people to get them to do what you want them to do. Now, I want to jump in here and show you how easy it is to create those. Um, and then, of course, you can share them in different places. The number one place I like for my clients and helping them in their marketing is is obviously it's Facebook, but you can also um, you can also create uh, this these landing pages using the tools that are available to you inside Realbird and use them and sharing them in different places, not just Facebook, but Twitter, um, LinkedIn, Google Plus, even Pinterest, even Instagram. So, I mean, here's a I found a great article shared by by Realbird on how to create a story in Instagram which is uh, uh, more and more people are spending their time on in Instagram. If you're looking forward to 2018, you need to have a strategy for engaging with people, number one on Facebook uh, and number two with Instagram. We use Pinterest as well, and, and I'll show example of that in a little bit. So um, I'm inside. Uh, this is um, Jessica Couch. You're logging again because I'm logging again here, so you can see that. So I'm logged in as her, and I'm clicking. Uh, I I go to dashboard, um, or I can go to listing marketing. Let's go there. And listing marketing. Now she has still has this listing that's still live. She sold almost everything, uh, but here's a couple um, that she still hasn't sold. Trying to get sold before the end of the year. Um, and we have this lovely home in Sacramento, California, seven hundred fifty nine thousand um, dollars. You can see what's uh, we've been on the market. Uh, almost two months, 60 days. Well, we already had one price reduction. You can see it's been seen quite a few times. And what we want to do is we want to take this and we want to use the landing pages that are built right inside Realbird. And we want to see if we can create a landing page so that we can uh, include that. And we're going to go into Facebook today and, and uh, create that, okay? So 
here there, if you click into your listing marketing, you click on the listing that you're interested in marketing and you click right over here where it says newly captured landing pages. Um, you can see that is uh, for Facebook ads and social media. And these are already pre-built. Now you can also, once they're, they're here, I'm going to go ahead and let's do this. This is a um, hot property recently reprised. Let's go hot property. Let's click on hot property. Okay. Okay. So what it does is it takes that first image and it uh, they have, there's a, a, a mask over the top of it so that we don't shoot, you know, kind of like, Hey, wait, we want to, we want to see if we can generate you as a lead before we give the information they might be looking for. So this is what the landing page will look like. And you can, you can embed this. Actually, you can embed this in, um, in your website, or you can go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and market it inside Facebook. So I'm clicking the Facebook link, Facebook link on the left here. And this gives you an idea of what it's going to say. Okay. First of all, I manage quite a few of my clients at timeline, which I manage Jessica couches. So I want to make sure I select her because I want this to be posted by her, not me. And uh, we're just about getting her here. Where, where is she? Okay. There we go. Just couch team real estate that gives back. It's posting in her Facebook page. I know what we want to do here is um, we want to say, okay, so we want to have a good call to action. So this might be curious to learn what your neighbor, okay, that's an idea for if we're going to do a, a neighborhood lead with those, uh, with these, um, uh, um, with these landing pages, but we want a good call to action. Here's a good example one. Here we go. So it might be something like, this is not on the MLS yet, click below, or text if you've set up your SMS texting option to this number to see all the photos and the properties. So this is an example of what it's going to create inside the Facebook. And you saw already that I've clicked on that. So um, let's do this for real. So uh, let's see. Oh, this is an executive pool home like that executive pool home it's well kept I said probably executive I'm just doing really good on typing it this morning here we go executive nope nope executive there we go I'm almost there so I learned to spell exact as I learned to spell this morning okay um uh, single level, that's a big deal. Level executive pool home in, and I always try to mention the area. And some ads I might pay for, and um, your your ad you place can be picked up organically if you've got the right keywords in it. And this is in a, in a, in a well sought after neighborhood. Single level executive home pool, pool home. Sacramento for sale. Um, While you do that, let sure. me just point out here to the attendees that if you get sort of like a spinning um, circle on your screen, then you need to push the green reconnect button. That's a webinar functionality. And sometimes if the bandwidth is not sufficient, then you need to reconnect because it loses the uh, the contact to the server. Uh, I don't know if this is now because of the way the internet works, but uh, I observed that that happens. So I just wanted to let you know. Am I still connected? Am I doing? Can you yeah, you are doing okay? fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you are okay. doing. This is for the uh, just for the attendees. Okay. I'm just typing real fast. I mentioned a few letters, but I'm backing up, making it look nice. Okay, just couch. There we go. At um, 916. Get a phone number over here. Yeah, that's our virtual tour, the new virtual tour. That's awesome. I'm branded. Looking good, looking sharp. And I'm just grabbing a for phone number here. There we go. Here we go. This is what I was looking for. Uh, 532-8916. 8916. Single level executive pool home. 
There we go. Yes, I'll just make sure <laughs> I'm looking at the right property. Yep, beautiful pool. Look at that drone shot. That's awesome. Okay. Um, there's the home there. I selected landing pages, hot property in Sacramento. Notice we don't give all the information. I'm not giving the address. I'm not giving how many beds or bath or even the price. Keeping it simple. Okay, got a call to action there, and uh, you could do hashtags as well. Um, hashtag uh, Sacramento Pool Home. I'll spell it right so we do her justice. That's getting the worst of my spelling here today. Pool Home. There we go. All right, so this is this is ready to post. So I'm going to post this. Um, it's going to post in her Facebook business timeline. I'm going to go ahead and post that. And uh, whenever you advertise, you should never give all the information. You should give leave something out. Give them a reason to uh, inter inter in interact with you, engage with you, uh, to find out more information, for example. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And I'm doing this for a single listing. Uh, but you can use these landing pages. Um, we've got this great article that was done by Realbird on, on engaging people uh, for your neighborhood. And this is done. I'm happy to share this with everybody. Let me see if I can uh, share that within a chat. Maybe I can have you share that, Gabe. Okay, so the, we're, we can talk about this a little more, but it's not just... Uh, a specific listing. You can also use it to market a, a localized within a localized a neighborhood to crap capture leads, and you can set a custom audience as well, which I could do with this listing as well. Go ahead. I'm going to um, let's go. Let's go to just couch here. All right, loading. Sometime. There we go. I clicked on it and I got too impatient. There we go. I'll just let it load instead of clicking it twice. There's just Jessica Couch. I'm scrolling down a little bit here. Uh, there's it post right away. Um, I post, posted one minute ago. I see this because I'm logged in as me. Uh, other people, we won't see that. Um, so this is the property, and then I can boost the post. Um, uh, I can create a custom audience to boost it to, or just boost the post generally. And uh, I see I've got the hashtag there. If they click on that, they're going to get they're going to get the landing page. And inviting them to homes this market move fast, being a hot property. Schedule an appointment before the bidding starts. Um, so these are. These are landing pages that you have available to you, okay? Um, if I want to boost the post, I have the opportunity to uh, to set a, a custom audience or take an audience that I've already created inside here. Um, I have one defaulted in here. I probably want to customize that a little more. Um, edit. So you're seeing me do this live. This is actually real. This is not Memorex, um, unless you're watching this webinar later and it's reserved time. Now I always try to consider uh, who might be who might be buying this home. Okay, uh, can a thirty-year-old afford a seven hundred fifty-nine thousand dollars house? Probably not. This is probably I'm probably going to raise this for like thirty-five. Of course, that's going to go up. I'm going to cancel out Real Lindo, Real Linda, which and I'm going to put in Sacramento. That's where this home is located. Once again, if I knew how to type this morning. It would know what I'm talking about. There we go, Sacramento, California. Um, it, I would probably zoom in, in a little bit. Probably something like just 10 miles. Okay. Yeah, 10 miles is kind of the smallest you can get. But, um, and that works for this home because this would be like a move up home. Someone else in Sacramento maybe has a home to sell in, you know, like. $450,000 or $400,000 and they want to move up. Let's definitely move up. Um, I do like to, that's a lot of people. If you think about it, that's a lot of people. 
Um, but if, here's a couple suggestions of how to customize that. I call it the caf audience cafeteria. That is, you're going to the cafeteria, you're choosing an audience. Um, yeah, so I want to do is uh, look at some other behaviors maybe and just put this in front of the people maybe that might be show that they're likely to move, okay? It's still a lot of people. And um, how about those that are uh, house hunting in here? They're looking. House hunting. And I can narrow that even further. Maybe those people that were that were using Zillow. With that interest in Zillow. Okay, let's see. Okay, 51. That's actually really good. I usually try to get between um, between like 25 and 50,000. That's that's actually towards the top. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then I'm going to set my budget. And what I usually like to go to at least seven days. Okay. And um, my budget, I usually try to spend about at least like $40. So I'm going to go ahead and put $40 in there. Yeah, I, I get some pushback from my clients when they say, well, marketing, we want to spend 40 bucks or 50, 60 bucks. Like, oh my gosh, that's so much. It's like, you know how much you're you'd pay, paying for Zillow leads? And you know how much you're paying, how much you would have paid for newspaper ads? A heck of a lot more than that. Okay, so let's, we're going to spend $40 and let's give me an idea of what we're going to spend. You, the reason you want to do seven days, um, as uh, mentioned in this article, is you want a full seven day cycle so that you can get an idea to see, you know, of what the demographics are, you know, what we, what day did they click on it more? You know, what are, what are the, most of the people clicking on the, the ads so that they can see it? Here's your seven days. We'll give you kind of a round day and you go longer. Obviously we want to get this house sold before the end of the year. So we're going to run this ad right up to the 29th. Okay. And um, I could turn on the pixels and um, I don't want to use that one. We'll use a different one, but I'll come back here and, uh, you, what you want to do with the pixel is basically a tool to help you follow, uh, to help you follow that, uh, that ad to see what, who interacted with, like what type of people interacted with it and you get feedback. So I'll actually come back here and I'll, and I'll, and I'll redo that pixel. It's a little long to do it at this time, but I'm going to go ahead and start it for now and I'm going to add the pixel later. So I'm going to go ahead and boost that. Okay, so that wasn't hard to do, and uh, you can see we're already running. Um, that's show what I'm targeting with people with uh, around one interest, with uh, two interests in one location, and hopefully that's a good uh, that's a good uh, audience to put this ad in front of. Not hard to do, but you notice that ad doesn't give all the information. We've left some things out, and that's good. That's not a bad, that's not a bad thing. That's actually a good thing. So these landing pages are now available for you. And let me dive in there so you can see them again. So I'm back inside Realbird. I've gone to listing marketing. I'm coming here where it says the new lead capture. And these are all pre-formatted. So I click any one of them. And then I have the opportunity to be able to share that listing. Eddie, can I just interject sure, something please. here? Which I like to tell people because we're talking here about the details. We're a, this is the sort of like the mechanism of generating leads. but. You need, you need to think about it this way. Lead generation is at the very, very beginning of the sales cycle, right? Somebody, somebody decides to buy or sell a house and they come online and they find whatever they find from you. Eric, I can hear you. You're, you're, you have a Sorry. Sorry. Um And so it's about all, it's, it, whether you get that, that name from that person who is looking at the listing or your property search or whatever depends on two things. One is how much attention span they have. And most people have a goldfish attention span for things they find. And remember, these are people who just decided to buy or sell a house because they're not, if they're a good potential lead for you, then they're not working with another agent yet, right? And second, how much trust relationship you can establish with them so that they volunteer their name or whatever it is. And so really what the reason I'm saying is because landing pages require some amount of trust relationship. And that's why they work best within the context of, for example, Facebook or, or your website or someplace where people know who you are so that they give out their name. 
Uh, otherwise, if they don't have an idea where it is, you, you know, if you would post it on some anywhere, uh, I don't know, maybe Craigslist, uh, your the effectivity would be lower. I recommend in those places where you believe that the trust relationship is 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 very low that you use texting because with texting you always get a lead. They don't have to opt in. They send you a text for the information. And um, you always get the, the caller ID, right? And so you always give them this option. And a lot of people today are much more comfortable texting than talking on the phone or giving you their email because maybe their email was was stolen and put on a spam list or they got a virus through a link or whatever. So consider these invisible things that you are trying to get the information from somebody who doesn't know you. They have a short time before they have they go away and you want you know them to talk to you and not somebody else okay so yeah sorry about coughing here sneezing here <laughs> okay so you have so so Gabe is right you have to think about the the sales cycle that people are going to interact uh, they're going to they're going to communicate with you in different ways and sometimes uh, the idea is to hit them when they're peaked interest along the what it called sales funnel and um, I, when, where we posted, where I posted this ad in here, this is on her Facebook. She has a lot of people she's connected with. She's very um, integrated with um, with her uh, giving back. This is a, a she's part of a, a you know obviously she has her real estate practice, but she also has uh, see look the sweet dreams. They got a new life. They're updating it. Uh, she's part of a company, um, an organization, a charitable organization called Sweet Dreams Foundation. These guys. Uh, what they do is they gather interest and um, uh, they help build uh, build rooms for kids that are terminally ill, so that they, you know because kids when kids when they're sick uh, they're in that room a lot. Well, as they get better, and uh, this company comes in and decorates these uh, rooms for these kids. So that's kind of part of her story is that she gives back, but at the same time she does real estate. So that's part of her audience. That a lot of the people that follow her. Um, uh, follow her not just for real estate, but but for also what she does, and she kind of she does a good job of kind of tying those things together at uh, Sweet Dreams. But people are gonna you're gonna interact with, interact with people in the different parts of the cycle. Obviously, we're looking; she's looking to find someone that's interested in um, in buying a home, and these are her listings. And she has an obligation to her uh, her sellers to get this home seen by as many people as possible, and. and uh, now, these landing pages are done in such a way, obviously, to focus them, to get them information about the specific listing. Um, but uh, you can also, it's uh, here, I'm going to go up, put a pull up the regular single property website that kind of has all the information. Here's this right here. These can also be shared uh, to where you don't have to uh, hide as much information. Uh, you can share this this way. So let me just show you so you can see what that looks like. Um, I'm going to share it in Twitter. Um, there we go. So I was going to tweet this listing. Okay, so uh, in, I just shared that inside Twitter. But, but all these tools are given to you um, inside your RealBird panel, and then you can share it in different ways and share it in different places this way. Now, obviously, this is a lot more information, but it still has your contact information. as a little mini video of the, the photos of the listing, and uh, th but these can still be shared. I hope that you guys are all, uh, when you're sharing listings, I hope, here, I'm going to go ahead and pull this up. So you're of the edit portion, edit listing details. Here we go. The other, th the other thing that I should mention is always try to make these listings in such a way that they're useful for lead generation even after they are sold. Why? Because as you sell more listings, all these property websites are places through which people can find you, right? And it's a numbers game. If you have 100 lottery tickets, it's much more likely that you're going to win the lottery than if you have one. Of course, nobody guarantees you're going to win. And each of these property websites, if done right, they are... Uh, potential lead generators. And what does it mean done right? Done right means that it's not just about the house because who cares about the sold house? It's sold. But, right, you, also, right, but you also put in something about yourself because that's really what you're selling. You're selling in lead generation. You sell yourself. This is the other thing that I'm always amazed that agents don't think about. You know, I when I wake up in the morning and I want to buy or sell a house and sit down to find 
to look around. I really am looking for an agent, even though I'm looking at houses and at uh, articles from Active Rain or Facebook or something. But really, I am am trying to find an agent who can serve me best for that 6% or 5% that they get. And what is that? Well, I want an agent who knows the neighborhood really well. I want an agent who knows uh, the type of property really well, an agent who is charismatic and has expertise and testimonials, right? Even though I'm looking at the listing, that's that's not, I'm really, okay, the listing is interesting. It has nice pictures and stuff. But, you know, agents have this on their agent websites. But if I don't go to their agent website, then then what? Then I'm not going to know anything if it's not in the listing. So with RealBird, the big, the huge advantage you get is that you can deliver your brand information to people who are interested in listings, property search, uh, virtual tours, uh, whatever you want, right? Because you can set up texting codes to your open homes and things like that so that people learn who you are because and make them work with you and not somebody else that they found five minutes earlier. You have the ability with the, within your RealBird account to be able to generate widgets to show your success. And um, more and more people want to know that you've been successful. Um, I, I, I have one of my, I have one of my clients, she's on Zillow. And uh, you know, Zillow, you can go in and maybe you guys don't know this, you should go visit your profile. Now, almost all agents, whether they're, they're paying Zillow customer, and known as a premier agent, or whether they're just a basic agent, you have a license, and you're in the MLS, you probably have a profile there at Zillow. And by the way, whatever you feel about Zillow, you should make sure you go there and that, that you fill out the information in the boxes they give you, that the opportunity to share, you know, what you are and who you've done, because you will be, you will be found by there, by pe- by folks. And this is the same example in RealBird. You have RealBird gives you this opportunity to create uh, single property websites for all your listings, and you should absolutely do so. Um, I've just clicked on listing marketing here and clicked on widgets. Once I clicked on widgets, I'm just gonna show you how quick and easy it is to be able to create, create a map. I'm doing this now for Jessica, Jessica since I'm in Jessica Couch, since I'm in her account right now. And I'm saying, okay, um, I wanna show um, sold services here. So I'm gonna go, here we go. Embed in web page. Oh, I'm in the search. I'm sorry. I meant to go to listing marketing. That's where your listings uh, old, new, active, um, and uh, sold are. So he, now that I'm in here, um, what I want to do is click on uh, widgets. Here we go. And I'm just quickly going to show you like uh, a map of the sold homes that have become sold. Let's see. I'm just going to click sold. Let's go sold or pending. Okay. And I've in the go ahead and preview and code. And then so you can have a map that can show the homes that you sold already, that you've been successful in sold, selling. Now she's pretty new to um, to real birds, so she has just a few, you know, that we've done the last uh, three months or so. But uh, I have other clients that have been with real bird longer, and this map is filled with the area showing all the sold homes. So, and, and I re- I guess the reason I was comparing that with Zillow is you have a place in Zillow to put your profile there and add your past sales as well. And uh, you should do that, go in and claim your past sales. Because uh, people, when they're when they're finding an agent, uh, they want to find someone that's been busy, that's been active. And here, I'll go ahead and pull up a profile here and show you what I'm talking about. I know this is a bit of a side angle, but I, I run this all the time. Okay, so she has uh, 35 past sales. This is Jessica Couch. This is her Zillow team. I, I just... Uh, profile just put it up and you can see her active listings there's four of them there's one we were working with Latham Street here today but here's your past sales get in there and add your past sales so once you log in your Zillow profile this is just a tip I'm going to tell you you should do as many steps as possible whatever you feel is Zillow the better you look on Zillow the more people are going to engage engage with you and, and what if they go in here and see you know you had um you know, 12 or 15 past sales the last 12 months, but you're only showing five, people are going to think, well, I don't work with them. They're, it looks like they're a part-time agent or whatever. Or they're really taking it easy. So this is another, yeah, go ahead. Eric, uh, uh, William is asking these listings that are coming up, they are, who they are provided by. I guess he's, he's uh, referring to the listings and sales on there, on um, ad oh, past is- sales. Yeah, um, okay. So this is a Zillow profile, and you guys can all log into your profile, find your profile, and log into it, and just make sure uh, that you have. Okay, 
So once I've logged in, here's the key. Some people get confused when they go in here. Uh, you'll see that this is dark blue. They'll log into their log into the back end of their agent profile on Zillow, and they'll still still see a light blue bar. It's kind of confusing, but you want to go up here where it says profile, and when you click on profile, they give you the chance to edit your profile, and then they'll turn dark blue, and that's when you'll know you'll have the options. Um, you know, use this space to market yourself, talk about yourself. You can add past sales, and uh, when you add past sales, what they're gonna what they are gonna want you to have is Put the referral address, and I've learned a trick is to find out, first find this listing, uh, or maybe represent the buyer, find the address in the general search box on Zillow.com and see how Zillow formats the address. If they do DR instead of drive, then that's what you put. And then you put the address of the listing, you help to represent buyer or seller, and then you'll put the address in there. So say, for example, if this was, um, I'm, you know, I'm just going to put my address in here uh, just to show you what that looks like. Facing out the okay, so I can say add a sale, and then it's gonna say, Oh, we know this home. And if, it, if it's already coming with, with one that looks like you, uh, go ahead and claim that. But if not, what you're gonna to need to do is say, I it, it, the official sale date was this, you know, you know, today's like 22nd of December, okay. Um, this was the price you put with a dollar sign and commas, and I represent the buyer or the seller or both, and then say, Okay, it's all correct, and it's gonna. Once you add that, and I'm going to do this add, it's going to say, I'm not going to click this because this is a dummy example. But you click the certify, yes, I completed the sale. That's what you're going to want to do. And then that will be added to your uh, to your profile. I think this is important. Whatever you think of Zillow, Zillow is putting people in front of your profile. Make sure you go and fill out all the boxes. Fill out your profile. Um, I'm going to tell you if you have – if reviews are huge. Reviews uh, are – reviews get sales. People will call you if they see lots of reviews. Now, she's just starting out. She's starting to get people. Um, when we started a month ago, she had no reviews in here. And she has a lot of people that would put give her five stars. But she hadn't used the tools. She's starting to use the tool. So so we're doing this now when we're building up the profile. And now, I've had, um, I've had clients that um, got as many as four closed deals plus uh, four to five by just having as few as nine or ten reviews on here. So... Uh, and without being a premier agent. Now, I'm not asking you to be an official premier agent where you're paying Zillow every month, like for their tools, like to, to be, um, you know, jump to the front of uh, the general audience in Zillow as uh, one of the featured agents that show up when the people are typing or searching in specific zip code. I'm not necessarily saying that, but I'm telling you that you need to use Zillow. The people are going there. Consumers are going there more than in any other place. So take advantage of that and, and make sure you make sure you take advantage of that and get, you know, dress up your profile. I'm not asking you to be a premier agent and pay the money. The, I've different mixed bag and some of my clients are paying and getting okay leads. Nobody's getting really great leads, but most of are getting mediocre to poor leads. But I'm not I'm not so so much saying become a premier agent is use the free tools they've given you to, to dress up your profile. And and just like Gabe said, within um, within Realbird, uh, you, you can have your listings be in Realbird and then mark them sold. This is the same thing that Zillow is doing here. And of course, Realbird was doing that long before Zillow did. But um, people will see those listings connected to you, and it does communicate a message that you've been successful with that with that transaction. Here's another tip while I'm in here. I, this is a tip I give to my agents all the time. Um, there's a Premier Agent app that you can download for your Android or for iPhone. And this allows you to be able to take a simple video where you're walking through the house um, and you're taking a video. No narration, no music, no text on top of it. But what happens is with your active listings, when you have, when you have these videos taken, uh, Zillow automatically takes those, video, those uh, listings and puts them to the top of their, their search engine that's built inside Zillow. And when you don't add a, and when you don't add a video, like um, – uh, if when you don't add a video, you're missing out. Okay. You can see here, uh, Jessica's in a way is missing. Hey, sorry to call you out on that, Jessica, but I'm I'm your coach. Um, add a video. And this is done within the Premier Agent app on your phone. That is once the listing is live on Zillow, um, you'll be able to pull through that app, only through the app, not through whatever other device you're taking the movie on your phone with. But through that app, you'll be able to um, 
uh, click that app and say, yes, I'm taking this fit. Real estate agents get bombarded with uh, with training webinars and, and your guys are pitched uh, as realtors are pitched things all the time. But I really think you should take the time to to uh, to lay down your protocol uh, of, of how you're going to market your listings and how you're going to market your services and make sure that you're using the best tools that are out that are available that are out there. And Robert has those tools and Robert is constantly improving so that you can be more successful and use cutting edge tools. Um, I, I was just sharing for you a bit. Gabe, were you, was I cut off and I was sharing, uh, you know, how to leverage Zillow to the best? Did you cut off? Yeah, towards the end of it, okay. uh, you were cut off. Uh, use what a lot of agents, I will go and pay lots of money uh, for, for tools. And I find out that they're, they're have a lot of tools that they're not even using. And so don't let that do that be that for you. Use the tools that are out there for free. And if you feel Zillow is going to exploit you, exploit them back. Use every tool that is given. Believe me, it's going to, if you do that, it's going to be helping you more than it helps them. But same thing with Robert. If you're in your Robert account, um, make sure that you, that you have, I'll give you an example here. Um, make sure there you're, that you're in here and that you're setting your global settings. And you say you have three extra pages here that go uh, next to uh, each one of your single property listings. Make sure you fill those out with about you or your testimonials or a link back to your, um, you know, invite people to like your Facebook business page. But these are going to be branded on every single one of your um, a single property websites. Yeah, let me show you. Let's go to Susan's here. So use what's there. Use what's available. These webinars that we do twice a month, they're available to you. Uh, we're not necessarily pitching anything here. This is to, for you to use the tools that you have and use them better. Here, I'm going to go to that. I'll show you how we've used them on Susan's uh, webs on here under global settings, how she uses the using the tabs here. There's the extra page one, because it's testimonials, extra page two, a little bit about Susan and extra page three, we've actually got a widget in there. So when you pull up our listings, we'll pull up on one of our listings here. This um, a home listing here. Okay, let's go ahead and click on the picture. And then let's click on view, viewing the single property website. And what you have is, see these pages I added, testimonials um, about Susan, near, oh, nearby homes, that's the property search. But this one, I, the other one I added was Facebook Us. So basically it has a widget where you can, you know, sign up to join your Facebook page, you know, so you can see everything that's going on there. Okay. So that pulls right up in the state. So use those pages to add, and they'll add them to every single one, and not only your active listings, but your sold listings. And like uh, Gabe was saying, it's another lottery ticket. The, the more connections you have, how people can find out how to work with you, or what you do, or what you sell, or what you represent, the more interaction you're gonna have, the more happy people you have connecting with you. Maybe you can show one of those inventory um, maps or, or Pinterest board. Yeah. So um, uh, so on, let's go to, uh, go to her. This is uh, um, Susan Rupert. Let's go to her, her website. She has a, good, has a website called State College PA Real Estate, State College Pennsylvania Real Estate. And um, uh, one of the options you have is to show, she's been using about six, about six years now since so she's been using Real Bird, and how I use it on, if you want to list with Susan, you, you can tell she's dominant in the State College area. I mean, it's like, she's like the listing queen. And this happens to be all her sold listings since about five, six years ago. And um, that map basically shows a successful sale. You don't know whether she was, a, we created the single property website in Realbird as her representing the seller side or the buyer side. It doesn't really matter. It just shows she's been very, very successful in that area. If you want to, you know, someone to list with in the area, she would be the person to call. So that's one way this tool in the back of Realbird shows. The other way is um, uh, it, it, these are some of the homes she sold. These are all sold. You, you know, obviously she's not going to. You want to buy this house? She's going to have to go back to the owner and says, "Okay, I got somebody else who wants to buy your house. You want to sell it?" The idea that these are sold listings and they've seen many, many times. That's what eight, almost nine thousand times. But it's clear that they're sold. But each one of these is a single property website that's living on the web there somewhere, and will get found branded by you. Now, we have the possibility to do There's only a few places in the country where outside you can't do this. But um, well, I made that show up in her website. How cool is that? And you can you can, uh, you can can do the same thing like, to show your success. So this is a tool. Use it. Realbird gives you this tool. Uh, here's another tool that we do. Um, it's uh, 
I'm going to pull up one of her, her latest listings. This is a, a lot listing. And uh, let's go ahead and view the listing here. And then you can post it in uh, Pinterest. And we do, I do post all her actives in, in Pinterest. So if I go here and say, okay, I'm going to pull up the single property website, um, translate in 10 languages, which you can't beat. And, uh, and there's going to be a place here for Pinterest. Oh, it's actually in the listing. There we go, the bottom of the listing. So go Pinterest. I want to post this listing in Pinterest. So I have her, I'm, I think I'm already logged in her Pinterest, hopefully not mine. Yep. And then she has different boards that she set uh, to be, this would be probably, this is probably my Pinterest board. But um, one of the ones boards she has is active listings so that she can post that in her active listings. I think this one's me. So that's why it's not showing her. So anyway, you want to be logged in your Pinterest and then you can, uh, you, then you can share that and then add that to your Pinterest. Okay. Yeah, so I'm in actually into mine, but she has one of her boards that she, she created and is um, active listings, pending listings, and sold listings. And uh, we're able to take that link that Realbird gives you and be able to share that. And of course, there's tons of places you can share this. You know, you share it in Google Plus. Yeah, I'm, in, I'm into all my tools right here. That's why I'm showing up instead of her. Okay. So I can then share that listing there and just a whole bunch of different places. Twitter, which kind of what I did today. So, so the goal is to, I, I think you need to use the tools that you got. Yeah, you can go out and spend a lot of money, a lot of tools, but a lot of tools are right here already. Use them, take advantage of them, come learn from them. For example, if you don't have your SMS setup in RealBird, which is an add-on to RealBird, I think the cost is, um, it's going to be under $3 a month. I haven't seen anybody here spend more than $3 a month and get lots of leads. Um, uh, yep, so I have, you can build custom SMS links with your Twilio number. Once you set it up, you can pick a fairly local number. This one's local to her. And people, you can set up the custom. So you text that to this, it'll get you this result. And this is, happens to be her page. That's her, um, you know, I embedded her website. Hey, what would your state college be a home, be a home we work today? Get your answer. So you put your address in there. Now, this tool happens to be another tool that I got through another service. Costs her only $30 a month. But what's cool about that is I use the SMS to, to drive people to it, to be able to get that, to be able to get that, to send them to that page that I created for her. Okay, cool. Thanks everybody for being on with us today and hanging on here through a couple of glitches we had. Uh, hopefully you learned something. If we have some of you that are not, uh, you know, that might be uh, thinking about signing up for Real Bird and you haven't joined yet, feel free to email support at realbird.com. Get a special link. You can try it for seven days, put it to work. And uh, before you have to, you know, pay anything. So thanks everybody. If you need help putting some of these tools together that you've seen here today, give me a call. I can. This is something I do. I coach and consult, coach and consult real estate agents. So I kind of put all the marketing together, and all the things they bought. It's amazing to me when I meet folks, find out all the tools they bought and they're not using. Realbird is a tool that you can put it to work in 2018. Put it to work. Don't let it rest. It can fly long and hard. Um, you've heard about the birds that fly what all the way from like northern Canada all the way to you know South America. That this it, this is a hardworking bird, and put it to work. I don't want to meet people and find out that that they're you know they're not using the tool when you can be successful generating leads, expanding your exposure and, and dominating your marketplace. Um, uh, we have that article that I didn't have time to get into. It's basically doing some similar to what we did today. Uh, uh, and, but creating neighborhood leads with Facebook ads in RealBird. And that's an article that's active rain. And I'll save that. Feel free to email me um, at webcoach at Gmail, and I will send that article out to you. That is an awesome article on how to be able to do that. Because I think a lot of agents, have, I've seen a lot of agents spend a lot of money on these predictive uh, postcard campaign companies, and they're paying 600 to 1000 a month. And here you literally have a tool that you can dive into Facebook and and. Uh, put yourself out as a specialist in a unique area, whether that's marketing a listing in a neighborhood or looking to grab um, uh, be to grab interest in being the real estate uh, specialist in a specific community, subdivision, neighborhood. Uh, so anyway, thanks everybody for being with us today. Uh, we'd love to have you back. Come back again. We have plenty more to share with you. Um, we'll be doing more webinars in, the, in 2018 and hoping to share cutting edge tools with you to help you be successful. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for coming to the webinar. Thanks very much for working through our glitches. Thank you, Gabe. Have a good day, everybody. Have a good weekend, and Happy New Year. Uh, happy Merry Christmas. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.
Thank you.